Chances are you've heard the statistics that something like 90% of new small businesses fail. I think that percentage is debatable and I think the definition of failure is pretty debatable as well, but it's safe to say that there's a lot of businesses out there that aren't achieving their overall potential and really what the business owner had kind of dreamed of whenever they kind of came up with this idea to start their own enterprise. I also noticed something else that was pretty much around 90% and that is that about 90% of business owners really don't have the fundamental financial literacy that they need to be able to run their business and ultimately have the financial skills to know how to increase their revenue, which is a fancy way of saying their sales, and how to make smarter decisions about how they're spending their resources with the ultimate goal of how do they drive more profit into their business. I decided to put together this micro course to be able to give you that information and give you an opportunity to be able to practice some of the skills so that you have a greater chance of success with your business. And there's some pretty predictable mistakes that business owners make along the way. So I'm going to do my best to walk you through them, show you where the pit holes are, show you what to avoid so that you can be one of these success statistics when it comes to new small businesses. So let's start off. You've made a decision to start your business. You know, you have this dream, you kind of have this product or the service or something in mind that you're hoping to kind of put together. And chances are when you were thinking about becoming a business owner, the first thing that came to mind was not, yay, I get to do bookkeeping. That's not really something that most of us really get excited about doing, you know, those administrative aspects of running a business. But there's a certain terminology that ends up happening that business owners are really, really missing. And that is thinking that all things finance, account, accounting and bookkeeping live under the same umbrella. And they actually don't. There's very distinct sub umbrellas underneath there. So I'm going to walk you through three really important distinctions that you are going to want to have. And that's the difference between a bookkeeper, the person that does your taxes, and a CFO. When it comes to your bookkeeping, that is going to be solely focused on what happened in the past in your business. It is going to be the person that if you choose to hire a bookkeeper, and again, it's your decision to choose to hire any of those roles, you absolutely can do all three of them on your own. You do not have to hire anyone to do any of those particular tasks. But let's say you decide to hire someone as a bookkeeper. What they're going to do is they're going to kind of be like your gopher. They're going to be the ones that are going to run around and gather up receipts, gather up paperwork, and their job is to make sure they've captured everything and plopped it all together in one spot. That one spot, we sometimes call your accounting software, so your QuickBooks, but frankly, business has been around a lot longer than computers have, so it could even just be a simple piece of paper where they're tracking. So they're putting everything together in one spot. When you're hiring a bookkeeper, what you're really looking for is someone with good clerical data entry skills. At the end of the day, their job is largely going to be to pick up a receipt. And if it says $26, you want to make sure that they don't type 62. Besides that, there's not really a lot of complication that goes into it. They will do what you might hear of as like a bank reconciliation. And then you kind of go down this whole rabbit hole of spending all of this time on it. All that they're trying to do when they kind of start talking about these bank reconciliations or any of those issues. They're just trying to say, I was trying to track down all of the receipts and I think I'm missing one because I don't have the same records as the bank. But fundamentally, your bookkeeper is an administrative role. Sometimes businesses will either choose to do it themselves, choose to get a family member, maybe someone that's retired and has extra time on their hands. Sometimes people will look at actually hiring a virtual assistant who can just basically document the procedures and say, you know what, here's where I'm plopping everything. It's a very administrative role. Sometimes I think people may unintentionally get frustrated with their bookkeeper because they're not realizing or they're anticipating that their bookkeeper is doing something above and beyond what, what they're actually tasked with doing. So your bookkeeper, focus on the past, focus on what happened previously. Typically, minimal analysis or if they're doing any analysis, it's pretty rudimentary. I mean, this really is a data entry clerical role. Their job, gather it up, plop it into one spot. So then how does that distinguish from say your tax accountant? So your tax accountant and your CFO are both typically going to be a CPA, meaning that they're a designated accountant. Whereas your bookkeeper probably won't be. You could hire someone with a CPA designation to do that, but it'd be probably far too costly for you. So typically with your bookkeeping, you're trying to find low cost labor. When it comes to taxes, again, you have the option of doing your taxes yourself. There's no rule that says that you have to hire anyone to do your taxes. It in some cases is going to 
going to make more sense for you to do them yourself. In other cases, it's going to make sense for you to find a tax specialist. So the tax person, whenever they're filling out these forms, they're filling out forms that the government requires. And what the government is going to require is to make sure that any of the money that you earned is actually the government is getting its cut on. So there's very standard forms that need to get populated. Your tax account is going to be the one that's populating those, making sure that it gets sent to the government, kind of working through a lot of that particular process. They can provide a little bit of what we call tax planning. So the distinction here is that most of what your tax accountant is doing, again, is looking at the past. They're looking at what happened before. They're not really looking at what's happening next or what's happening into the future. And when they are looking at what's happening into the future, it is strictly from the perspective of how do we help you minimize your overall taxes. The distinction now between your tax person and your CFO is if you were kind of thinking of a great ginormous table. So if you're kind of thinking of a ginormous table, the top part is going to be all of your streams of revenue coming in. The bottom part is going to be all of your different expenses. Your tax specialist is looking at one of those expenses and that expense happens to be your tax line and they're going to help you minimize your tax liability. Your CFO is going to look at the entire paper top to bottom and so your CFO is going to take a broader perspective. They will obviously care about minimizing your taxes but they're going to be more so looking at your revenue and saying you know what changes can we make to your business model to be able to boost that revenue? What are some different financial strategies that we can apply to be able to increase the amount of money the company is bringing in and where the tax person is going to really really focus on that one tax line item your CFO is going to look at you know the hundred things that you spend money on in your company and they're going to put through kind of a, a thought process of saying well what is the best use of funds in order for us to maximize our profit this year next year five and ten years into the future so it's a little bit of a broader view that they're looking at your CFO also tends to be more looking into the future so where your bookkeeper and your tax accountant are heavily focused on what happened before and what happened in the, fact, the past, your CFO will look at that to a certain extent to kind of determine some trends. For the most part, they're really going to be saying like, you have goals as a business owner, you have numbers you want to reach, you know, you're running this business to be able to make money for yourself, for your family, for whatever kind of impact you're trying to have. So they're going to tend to be more focused on being informed about what happened in the past, but really trying to help you say, what plans do you need to put in place to be able to boost your profit? What kind of things do we need to test and iterate so that we can bring in more sales and more revenue? What do we need to test and iterate and see if you're getting the biggest bang for your buck on all these things that you're spending money on every single month? So I think those three distinctions are really important because a lot of times I'll hear small business owners kind of say like, well, what should I look for in an accountant? Well, it's really important to know what is the task that you want help with? Do you want help with just someone rounding up some papers? Do you have some government forms you need to fill in at the end of the year for your taxes and you want someone to help you or give you advice on that one line item or you're struggling with how to fill in that form, then you're going to want to tax. Are you looking for an overall advisor and someone to partner with you to find ways to make more money? Then you're more so looking in the realm of a CFO. So those are your three different distinctions.